around things that are happening in and about Uganda. On the show this morning, we get to talk about something that might be of interest to you. You have heard about the three arms of government. One of them is the judiciary. And the problem the judiciary has in Uganda is that the public perception is that the judiciary is a, a bit difficult to navigate, if I can use those words. Actually, when you think about the judiciary sometimes, the first thing you think about is fear. And what can we do to make sure that you understand your rights and your interaction with the judiciary for it to be beneficial to you? That's what we're talking about today because we have an open court day coming up where you can go to court, not to be arrested, but to learn. I'm joined by some very important guests to join me, shed some light on, uh, on this very important matter. Her Worship Jen Francis Navuma, who is the Chief Magistrate in uh, NMPG. Good morning. Good Welcome morning. to see Your Worship. Thank you. Welcome it's, to. It's very good to be saying Your Worship and not being in the courts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that's the amount of fear that we get when we are dealing, when we're saying those two words. Yeah. Uh, also joining us is uh, His Worship James Eremi Mawanda Jumire, who is uh, PRO with the Judiciary. You're welcome. Uh, thank you very much for hosting us. Um, so let's start from there. Again, yes. I'm sure you, you I start with you, Your Worship, yes. James. You, yes. you hear this a lot everywhere you go. Yes. The moment the words Your Worship are mentioned, mm -hmm. people start quaking in their pants. Yes. Of course, uh, um, that is, I think, if premised on uh, uh, where we come from. You know, this is... Uh, uh, a court system we inherited from uh, the colonialists, which is a little bit uh, a departure from our traditional systems. And uh, people don't understand a lot about the courts. They don't understand about a lot about the decorum there. So it's understandable when our people uh, have that kind of fear. When you say you worship, <laughs> I'm very certain somebody is wondering, what is he worshipping about? Yeah. They say, my Lord, what is about my Lord? So just that nomenclature alone has issues. Yeah. But uh, we have strategies, interventions, that uh, are intended to ensure that we bring our people on board. We demystify this kind of thing. And one of them is coming and we are talking. This conversation is very easy. Yeah, yes. it becomes very, very important. Yes. Uh, Yoship Nambuma, yes, uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, National Court Open Day and, and what this essentially is all about. Okay, thank you so much, Ben. National Court Open Day is one of the innovations brought by the judiciary. What do we mean by this? It's a bid to bring people closer or judicial services access closure to the people. Remember, we derived our mandate from the people. So it would be so bad for you to send me out there to do a certain job and I don't come back to tell you how am I doing business and when and with who. So that is why we are coming back to you who is listening and watching us to give you this opportunity to appear on 29th February at Kololo Independence Ground so that we interact. You ask questions. Somehow we even comment, or you give proposals to the judiciary. Yeah. Uh, uh, your, your worship, uh, the constitution is very clear. Article 126 mm. um, talks about the, the rights that we have in terms of judicial power mm -hmm. being derived from people, supposed mm -hmm. to be used to ensure that it's in, you know, within the law's aspirations. Um, this challenge that we have of where sometimes you know, mm -hmm. get the feeling that uh, I can't go to court, I am poor, uh, I will never get justice. It's completely unfounded, isn't it? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Because uh, for starters, what's our symbol of justice? A scale. And that scale is not tilted anyway. It is a very wonderful straight scale. And everybody in Uganda is equal before the law. Now, whether you're rich or not rich. And judicial officers, they ascribe to the oath and to serve the people of Uganda without fear or favor or ill will or any other extra references. So the rich, the poor are all Ugandans who must receive justice on that scale. It's a question of law and fact and evidence. Yeah. So our people who have that kind of feeling, this is the time we have come out clear, and we want to tell them 
that those are fallacies. They are myths they should disregard and come forth. The judiciary is very welcome. They are waiting for you. We are going to serve the people because mm -hmm. our mandate is derived from the people yeah. to serve them. And that article is very instructive, Article 26. And this becomes a very important thing, um, Your Worship, the fact that the judiciary is there to serve. Yes. Um, the motto for the judiciary is justice yes. for all. Yes. Uh, and yet, many times, again, that discrimination that you seem to hear, where people tend to think that uh, if I am poor, for example, I will never be able to get justice. I'm, I'm sure you encounter this all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. These are comments from the public. These are comments from the public. That is the perception why this day is, poor, is uh, which is the first of the kind, by the way. Mm. So the judiciary is coming up to remove that perception. Mm. That perception has caused a mistrust to the judiciary. So we are like, how do we do it? Uh, what I can assure you, Ben, as we are working or as we are executing our mandate, we don't work alone. We have our stakeholders, like the IGG, the Office of the DPP, the Uganda Prison, the Uganda Police. So at the end of that day, because judicial at the end yeah, is at the tail end, you find that whatever is done by those institutions is placed on the head of the judiciary. So to remove that perception or to bring knowledge to the person who is listening in right now, what have we done? One of the innovations is the National Court Open Day. These open days have been there, but at the level of the circuits, high court circuits. But this time around, we have the Court of Appeal, the Supreme Court, and the seven divisions of the high court are going to interact with you, who is listening in, because of that statement which you have just said, this National Court Open Days theme is people-centered approach to justice. So we want to bridge the gap between the judiciary and you, who is listening in. If you don't mind breaking that down for us a little bit, because you just mentioned things I'm thinking. So seven divisions, circuits. The high, yes. What are all of these things? Because for us, we just think court as one thing. OK. What's, what's that breakdown? Oh, Again, I'm, I'm preempting some of the questions <laughs> that people will be asking, I'm sure, when, when they get to come on the 29th. Mm. Uh, these are some of the things that we'd probably want to be able to learn a bit about. Yes. You know, the judiciary is known at a lower level because we have the courts, the lower courts, so they are known at that level. To give you the hierarchy of the judiciary, we begin with the Supreme Court up there. We have the Court of Appeal. We come down to the High Court and the lower courts. This is where you will find the Chief Magistrate, Magistrate Grade 1, Magistrate Grade 2. So these open days have been there at the High Court level and the Chief Magistrate Courts. So why National Court Open Day this time around? We want you to know how the Court of Appeal executes its mandate. Well, how does the Supreme Court work? In other words, it is coming to you so that you can get to know how the court processes are done in these different courts. Yeah. Yes. Um, Your Worship, one of the things that happens a lot is that people end up sometimes mm -hmm. not getting justice because of, of ignorance. Mm -hmm. um, they, I think, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. try to work on, on emotion mm -hmm. and then therefore decide that I didn't get justice because uh, her worship didn't like, didn't like me or something like that. Oh yes, so we have uh, uh, <coughs> had a lot of uh, issues where uh, people, because of uh, perceived biases, okay? They think that a decision was taken against them. By and large, bias is a ground of appeal right. in the event that, yes, you have actual bias that you can prove in the other court. But for a decision having been taken, we tell our people, that's the decision of the court. The solution is to you for you to exercise your right of appeal. Right. There is a next level. That's on the assumption that you have, and sometimes the decision should be final if you read it carefully, if it's best within the law, and you ask around, there, there might even be no grounds for appeal. So Definitely. You Definitely. might just be advised not to bother going that way, right? If our 
advocates particularly were to appreciate the judgments of the courts because our judicial officers are trained, they are professional, we are continuing to train them, to skilling them, to ensure we have quality judgments. Now, for a judgment to be handed by a judicial officer or a court, we believe that that decision should be able to conclude the matter. Nonetheless, a dissatisfied part has a right of a, but you should have grounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Advocates who represent these people should look at the judgment and come up with grounds. Not, not mere, you know, for the sake of it of having maybe further instruction fees to go to the next <laughs> level and then, you know, and then they end up losing outside the other side. But what is uh, the issue here? As we come for this National Court Open Day, we would like to sensitize the public on uh, a number of issues. We want to sensitize them on the different court processes. These are court processes obtaining in the high court divisions in Kampala. As my sister has said, high courts in the circuits, we have had court open days where we invite the public, we have a discourse like this, and we have feedback. We also give them commitments. We streamline and develop best practices. This time around, Kampala, with its high court divisions, the Court of Appeal, the Supreme Court, have never had such an engagement. Mm -hmm. That's what's peculiar about this time. And so we want to do sensitization on the different court processes in those courts. We would like also to make some demonstration, demonstrations to the different, uh, to the people yeah. in the, I, I, along those different divisions and the court system. Because that's a very uh, good uh, learning process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, we, what, what we, we want to show them. Yeah. Because many people don't know. Yeah. They don't know. And by the way, it's so critical that our people, we must intensify public sensitization and awareness campaigns for people to understand these courts. Yes. You can imagine, we started with just your worship and the stigma it causes. <laughs> now, we are talking of High Court, Court of Appeal and Supreme Court. Just imagine the magnitude there. Yeah. This is the chance our people we are calling them. And we want also to give uh, them to give us feedback on our court services. Are we doing it well? Yeah. Where are we not doing it well? Because there might be room for improvement yes. in some areas, right? And sometimes, and it's just natural. I may not know my weaknesses until you tell me <laughs> that, oh, my brother, there is need for improvement here. And this is what we're asking them. Let them candidly come and join us in this conversation. We want to understand where are we not doing well, yeah. and we move on to improve. We want to interact. You know, the cost system, as my sister said, we don't work in isolation. We work with other stakeholders. And we want to showcase that networking and the interrelationship so that they see if I am charged with a criminal offense in the high court division, criminal division, and my case has taken some time there, and I am asking, why is it taking so long? We want to show them that the criminal division works alongside the office of the ODPP. Yeah. Prosecution works alongside the, uh, the office of the advocates, okay? Uganda Law Society and all other legal aid, legal aid providers. We work alongside with the police, okay? So that at the end of the day, you are able to understand probably where is the delay? Is it court as, I, as we normally hear, you know? Yeah. Every matter which takes too long in court, there's it, a problem of the court. And yet in many cases, it has nothing to do. I this. want to show you, we have land matters. Yeah. <laughs> Every Ugandan talks about land cases, land issues, land issues. But why are land matters taking long in the courts? We shall be able to demonstrate to the public, okay, how the processes from registration to conclusion of the case move and who are the players. Yeah. So that at any time T, a citizen is able to know if this player has played this part. I'm certain the court will be at this other level. Mm -hmm. The other thing we have in stock for our people is exhibitions. 
all our high court divisions are going to exhibit. The land division will exhibit and showcase what they do and tell the public. Criminal division, what they do. These issues I have been hearing on social media and on other, uh, other form of media about bail, bail refunds, how, how does what? The criminal division is going to tell you. There are a lot of wrong information going out there. Sometimes from officers. That, that when you court, pay right? your bail, you don't receive it back. Yeah. That's not right. This is your money. And we are calling upon people who have such claims for bail refund. Please, come up. If you don't know how to claim, go to your nearest a court. The court officer there will explain it to you. Yeah. But some of them, I don't know, maybe it's because of the fear you talked about <laughs> earlier. But exhibitions are going to be there. Not only the courts. I talked of the divisions. I mentioned only two, but we have about seven divisions of the high court, family, commercial. We also have registries like inspectorate of courts. Mm. People who have complaints. We want the inspectorate of courts to interact with the public and tell them on how to raise their complaints mm. and how best to be served. We have judicial training institute. That's an institute which trains us and keeps skilling. Somebody may have some very useful information that we can share uh, with the training institute, which will improve the training of our officers. And how they then end up uh, yes. doing We have then, outside that, we have the court of appeal. If you don't know about the, the magistrate's court, then it is very important you know about the court of appeal and even where, the Supreme Court. That's where it ends up eventually yes. if things have to go to that level. So after the courts, we will now have other exhibitors, the police, ODPP, legal aid providers, and even other government agencies yeah. which, who work with us in the sector. The, your worship, one of the things that happens, we've, we've changed now, the judiciary has gone digital, we have ECMIS now, yeah. which is helping things a lot, very mm -hmm. clearly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People might be watching and thinking, ah, this thing was probably maybe for lawyers. I, I will go to my lawyer if I need to go and learn anything. But mm -hmm. it's important for them to come because sometimes even lawyers might not be very knowledgeable about some of these things. We yes. had a, a situation, you might have seen it on social media, where someone was trying to get bail for a client uh, on the grounds that uh, they have children. And when they asked for proof, <laughs> they only provided... Uh, an immunization card. <laughs> <laughs> and, and from a purely logical perspective, it's clear that I can't use that to prove that this is a child, right? Yes. So people need to come and actually learn <laughs> yes. for themselves about some of these things. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for that question. Actually, like you said, that there is that fear that the public has for the court. So we are trying to remove that fear. How do we do it? By calling you on that day so that you come and given an opportunity to ask a question where you feel you really need to know what it means. For example, when you talk about ink miss, the world is going digital. So, so the judiciary shouldn't be left behind. Mm -hmm. So now filing in some piloted courts now is online. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go to a lawyer to do this. So what does that mean? Do not sit back and relax. 29th day is the day for you to come and learn ask questions in regards to inkimis and so many other questions. For that, if I may also state, the judiciary is trying to move from courts, oh, from the courtrooms, get the court out of the courtroom and take it to the public. Because it's the public which uses our services, so we want them to know how do these services work? How do the judicial officers work? The judicial officers are also human beings, like you see us here. So we want the public to get out of that fear if we are to serve them better. Yeah. And the mistrust they have, this is the time for us to clear our name by calling you and come understand how the processes are done. Yeah. Yes. Your, your worship, any chance that we might have some court cases being heard or settled <laughs> that day? Uh, I want to uh, inform the public that uh, uh, on court open days, and which this time round is at Kololo. 29th, 29th February, so next, next week on, next week on, on Thursday. Thursday. Uh, Kololo grounds is not a court, okay? <laughs> it's a, a ceremonial ground. We are having our function there, where purely we are coming to have a conversation. We are coming to showcase, we are coming to sensitize, we are coming to see to it that we bridge the gap between the courts 
and the sister agencies with the public. The theme was a people-centered approach to justice. That is our main focus. We want to tell the public how people-centered uh, our interventions in the administration of justice to their service delivery. Now, what do we wish the people to understand here? That uh, on that day, uh, the courts in those particular areas, okay, of the divisions, because we shall not be in the courthouse, we want to apologize in advance that on that day, those cases will be given another date because it's so also very important. Don't come expecting that your yes, matters are going very, to be sorted. It's very important that you, we, 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 we empower you with the knowledge and information, yeah. okay, which will help you actually on the next date when you come to court because we shall have probably demystified the fears and the concepts about court processes and probably you are in a better position even to follow what you have been wondering. You mentioned something to do with ECMIS being something for lawyers. Mm -hmm. No. Anyone who has uh, computer knowledge, okay, is free to access ECMIS, is free to file his matter there. We are simply bridging the gap, reducing costs and making it more efficient and effective. Wait, you're saying I don't need a lawyer to file? Except where you are challenged. But even when you are challenged, we have kiosks at the courts. We have uh, 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 a, 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 a percentage of courts which are now on ECMIS. We have not rolled the entire country, okay? Of course, rolling out the entire country is a gradual process. But we are moving uh, cluster by cluster, cluster by cluster. And in the process, we have done a lot of training. We have trained the lawyers. We trained judicial officers in the first place and judicial staff. We trained the lawyers. And the training programs are continuous. We have a lot of programs intended to even train the public. Uh, under cluster one, there was a lot of sensitization about ICMIS on uh, uh, all media. And I'm certain people now know what ICMIS is all about. The challenge is how to practically do some of these things. And we know our peasants down there in the villages, they may not know these things. But probably they may not be those in already ICMIS piloted courts. By, by and large, where you can afford a lawyer, why not? You can use your lawyer. But even lawyers sometimes are challenged. Yeah. But we have those kiosks, and our staff are very worried to assist where there is a challenge on how to log on to the system, how to do, etc. And then you are effectively served. Yeah. So, ECMIS is a tool in this uh, fourth industrial resolution. As we go to the fifth, we can never, it is e government, and the, and the judiciary is part of government. So we are moving that direction, and we want the people to embrace change. We have a lot of advantages we have so far registered under ICMIS. Mm. You see? Efficiency, speed, you know? Uh, revenue collections, you know? Which go into the consolidated fund, and then the money goes to help other uh, areas of government funding. Mm. So uh, ICMIS is a very good tool, and uh, we shall be, as and when the funding from government comes, we shall be rolling to more courts and more courts and more courts and perfecting. Yeah. Actually, uh, the, the first pilot phase allowed us even to, uh, to, to, to understand emerging issues. And we keep addressing them. So, it means let them come. The, our ICT department will be available to explain it also. They can come and learn let uh, them come everything and learn. they need to come We have learn. any materials educational materials on uh, information and all of these other processes. And yeah. we are going to give you, come and pick a leaflet, a brochure, a magazine, etc. from the courts, mm. from the stakeholders. That is all information. It, it, it sounds very exciting. Uh, Your Worship, I'm assuming that at uh, this national court open day, you're going to have even the most senior judicial officials be coming to interact with the public? Yes. Um, who, do we, who do we expect to interact with when, when we come next week? <laughs> oh, this is really <laughs> nice. This is very great. Let me tell you this. <laughs> Let me tell you this. Yes. Some people would like to know who are the big people who are going to be there. Mm -hmm. Okay? Number one, mm -hmm. if, if, if... You, you need to start with yourself. <laughs> 
I want to start with the <laughs> number one. <laughs> there is number one of this country. Yes. If number one pleases, and that would be our, uh, which is our interest. His Excellency the President, if he pleases to come, he will be there. Okay? Because we wanted him to be the chief guest. But number two, the honor of chief justice. Let people come and ask some questions, if they so wish, to appreciate that the courts are there for the people. And the honor of chief justice is ready to answer to the people and interact freely with the people. You know, if the chief justice can interact with the people freely, then yeah, a magistrate grade two, grade one in the village is there, yeah, would be in order to ensure that, yes, he allows the public that actual, actual interface. Mm. The judges of the Supreme Court will be there. The judges of the Court of Appeal, the Deputy Chief Justice, Chief Justice will be there. The principal judge, the head of the High Court will be there. The Chief Register will be there. I will be there. <laughs> 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 and uh, we want to tell the public that uh, uh, we know uh, this is a national court open day. And our air focus has been on the uh, high court divisions in Kampala because the circuits have had uh, a, a treat of this. We also intend to have those regional uh, open days in the regions. But we are also aware that the public would want to come for, from as far as Arua, Guru, as far as Kapchora, Bukwo, yeah. Kabale, Kisoro, but they may not be able to reach because of constraints of transport, etc. We have plans that those who cannot come to Kololo grounds because of probably the numbers that may be there, probably because of other challenges, yeah. we shall be live on, on your media, you know? NBS, you will be broadcasting to those who can be in their comfort of their sitting rooms and watch us live. And be able to follow and Yes, YouTube will be on and all other uh, yeah. uh, means of broadcasting. We shall be with them so they can be comfortable even in the comfort of their homes yeah. and follow us so, and the proceedings. So it would be much better to come and, and interact with the actual judicial yeah. officers. Physical so, interaction mm, is very key. Yes. Very key. Yes. Um, any last words from, from you, Your Worship? that we need to take note of as we prepare for Thursday next week? Oh, yes. Uh, one of the most important things, which I would not leave the studio without talking about it, are the new even innovations mm. put in place by the judiciary. Yeah. Why people are always saying our cases take ages in courts, but we want that to be Which normal. was true, to be fair. Which we want now to be normal. <laughs> How are we solving it up? By introducing the following one, small claims procedure. Small claims procedure, this is where you're claiming money between zero and 10 million shillings. How do you do it? Just walk in the court of your proximity, in your jurisdiction, and explain to the front desk officer why you're at court. Definitely that person is well aware of what you want. He will take you through. And in this system, you're not paying any coin. This has worked for us, and it has reduced case backlog in our courts. Mm. Then we have what we call plea bargain. This is where you are charged with offenses of, let me say, the, uh, defilement, murder, attempted murder, etc. But you are sure you did this. So because you will know that you did this. Exactly. Right. So to make things easy, what does the judiciary, what has it done? You just say, OK, now I did this, but I'm ready to discuss with a state attorney or with the office of the DPP about my sentence. Mm. So when you agree, you sign an agreement. So you walk in to the judicial officer and that is sorted. So you've spent less time, you have spent no money, and I think it's sorted out. And there's a bit of maybe a chance for a linear sentence. If you... There is. No. There is because the judicial officer will consider all that. No. You haven't wasted court's time, you've pleaded guilty immediately, so many things are considered. Yeah. Then we go for mediation. This is where you're given a chance. Ben and Jane Francis, you have an issue. Why don't you sit and agree? So you sit, agree, and go back to the judicial officer and say, this is what we've agreed upon. These are the timelines, how I'm going to pay him. 
The judicial officer will let you go so easily. We have reconciliation. These are things in our constitution. Because we are there to promote unity. We are there to promote justice and fairness. So you are told by the judicial officer to reconcile mm. if the room is there. Yeah. So those are some of the innovations court has brought up to reduce on the case backlog and the time spent which, in court. Which people can come and learn about next week, Thursday 29th, National yeah. Court Open Day. If you want to come and learn a bit more, of course, you can follow it here on NBS TV, but also go to Kololo Independence Ceremony Grounds. That's going to be Thursday 29th. I want to say a big thank you to your worship, Jen Francis Navuma, for being with us. You. And your worship, James Mawanda Jumire from the Judiciary for shedding some light on this for us. We look forward to next week where we can join the National Court for Open Day. Yeah, and um, so go, go and learn a little bit about what you need to do in, uh, in the court system. We'll take a break, breakfast meeting. We'll be back in just a bit.